Welcome to IGN's Greatest Minds. In this four part series, we'll show you how Minecraft, yes, Minecraft, can put you on a path to becoming a fully fledged engineer. But since I have no idea what I'm doing, I've invited Wild Engineering, a redstone specialist with years of experience, to craft a blueprint for our engineering future by teaching us how to build a numpad. Brought to you by the US Air Force. There are many ways to serve in uniform and out full-time or part-time. Learn more at airforce.com. Welcome back everyone. In the last episode, we went over the basics of binary. We built logic gates, learned how binary addition works, and then we even built a working ripple carry adder that was easy to build, but inefficient. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how logic gate delay works. We'll modify an RCA into an instant carry adder, extend that adder beyond eight bits, learn how a binary decoder works, and then make our first number pad. So let's talk about gate delay. We'll start with an AND gate like the ones we built last time. Place our torches, and you'll notice that no matter the path, this torch takes one tick to calculate, and so does this one down here. This means that the output will take two ticks no matter the path, because our setup is symmetrical. So if we flip one input to be true, the output will only become true two ticks after the second input is also flipped. It's like the first input wasn't even there. To explain this concept of gate delay, let's check out an example using a piston. So how can we get an AND gate where at least one of the inputs doesn't have a delay, getting the instant an instant carry adder? Well, we can replace it by building something that looks like this, going up four blocks and adding a piston that can push a block down. We'll make the top an input and the bottom another input. You notice that the piston is cutting the bottom wire, which has zero delay, but it can't output the signal since the wire is cut. It's like having this AND gate and flipping the input like this. No matter what we do to that lever, there's no output. But if we open it, now we have an output that has zero delay since it doesn't have to pass through any torches. It's just a wire. This is the interaction that we're going to exploit. Now before we move on to the adder tutorial, let's see how we can make a modified XOR gate, which uses a piston to switch between inverted and non-inverted inputs. This results in an XOR or an XNOR, depending on the inversion of the inputs. We'll build something that looks like this, placing the inverter there so it doesn't affect the wire above it. We'll build up like this, and add the same type of piston cutter from our AND gate earlier, then add our inputs for both. So as you can see, the output is true, unless one or the other input is on, but not both. This is the XNOR build we'll be using for our instant carry adder. So without further ado, Let's get started on our instant carry adder build. To do that, we'll need the XNOR gate we used in episode 1 that looks like an infinity sign. But this time around, we're adding a modification with a glass block at the bottom. We'll add our NOR gate by placing repeaters and a torch in these positions, plus our AND gate by doing this. So as you can see, we added AND up there, and now we can OR the NOR and the AND together to make XNOR. Finally, we'll make one more AND gate at the bottom to act as our carry logic. So flipping one switch will make our output turn off, both turn it back on, and we get our carry out at the bottom. Now that our XNOR is built, we're going to modify it into the adder. For this, we're going to need a sticky piston. We'll bring these down, place our pistons here and here, and add a block to the bottom piston. So now if we power them and flip one of our inputs, you'll see them both trigger. The top piston will update the bottom one, which is just a weird mechanic that works in Minecraft. Now what we can do is form a bridge down here, making our carry wire cut or continue depending on the piston's position. Next, we'll use the XNOR we built previously over there and turn this into a full adder. We'll place a torch there and then add some more glass blocks here, adding a wire to a repeater. You'll see that the signal will flow from our carry to this new extension, but won't disrupt the rest of the build. We can even test that out like this, and we can see that it does not flow up. Let's remove that switch and finish this XNOR gate, going up four blocks and adding our piston and block here. The last thing we need to do is finish up the rest of this adder. And for this to stack properly, including the torch here, we'll need to add an extension here and a torch to this block. We'll line up the bottom row that has our inputs and then set our first position. Then we'll come up here and set our second position. Then we'll stack it once using world edit. Great, now let's modify this to make a full two bit adder. We'll place glass box here to prevent interference from other signals and extend our left signal out into the left while our right signal is going up. You'll notice that this left wire controls a piston next to it, while the one on the right controls a piston below it, all without any interference. We'll reselect our first position and set our second position to include the full height of our build. Keeping in mind that we already have two bits and we want 10 bits total, we're going to stack this four times to make another eight bits. And just like that, we have a working 10 bit adder. Let's finish cleaning this build up by taking out this block and adding our carry in. So now we can test that our build works. Let's add 3 plus 5 like we did in episode 1. 
This time it's a lot easier since we have A on top and B on the bottom. If we check our outputs, we'll see that 3 plus 5 is equal to 8, which is correct. Next, let's see what happens if we try to generate a carry all the way across. We'll switch all our A inputs on, and we'll see that we have all 1s on the output like that. When we flip on our carry, it should carry across, but it only reaches there. So let's figure out how to fix that. So, to extend our adder beyond 8 bits, we'll need to swap out this block with the glass or slab, and place a redstone target next to it. That redstone will redirect into the target block, meaning if you place a repeater, it can power into the block going this way. This makes it so the power doesn't come back this way. Power the target block again, and create an infinite loop. With that, we successfully extended it. Except we've also broken one piece of our adder. We don't have a torch there anymore. So if we add a torch down here, and move this wire down one block here, that resolves the issue. Now that we've fixed our adder to carry the signal from start to finish, we have one last modification to make to it. We'll need to synchronize it all together, since beyond this point, where we have our target block, it takes one extra tick to activate. So what we can do is delay them by one tick before the target. An easy way to do that is by replacing the ends of the wires down here with repeaters, and then add one extra tick to the repeaters on the layer above. Now the repeater leading into our block is a special case that we need to modify. Since this one is after our target, this repeater only needs one tick, so we can go ahead and make sure that it's set to that. And now, our entire build is synced. So let's test it out. We have all of our inputs on. Let's bring our carry out here so we can see them all. And as you can see, there's no ripple, and they all change at the same time. So adding a 1 while having all of our A inputs being true generates a carry across all of them to a carry out all of the way over here. To generate our carry out, we can add a torch here and extend the signal out. Now, we have a carry out. And there you have it, a fully synchronous adder. Now let's move on and build a 4-bit decoder. This build is super cool and super modular. We'll start by building four blocks on top of each other with a gap in between each of them. We'll extend them out like this, and then we'll add glass or slabs like this. You can even use different colors for different addresses, and then we're building a staircase up like this. You should end up with something that looks like that. We'll add our redstone to the glass ends like this, and then we'll add in some repeaters as filler. We'll be replacing these with torches later. Then we'll add redstone to the left side of it like this, and we can select our world edit positions here and here. We're going to need 10 total locations, and we have one so far, so we'll stack this build 9 times. Now the reason we're building this decoder is because we want to decode binary values 0 through 9. That's why we only need 10 spots. We can start filling in these addresses with the right binary values. With our least significant bits at the bottom, and the most significant ones up top, that's 1, 2, 4, and 8, meaning then there's 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we know this is going to be 8 and 9. Let's clean up these blocks. And now if we power on here with levers, if I want to get the address for 2, the third column turns off. That's 0, 1, and then 2. And if we want to detect which one is on, we can wrap around like this into a block at the top. To make this easier, we're going to use world edit again, selecting the top as position 1 and position 2 on the block just below it. We'll expand by 1 and then stack it 9 times. Now we can see whenever we select an address here, we can change which torch turns on at the top. If we want the 8th torch on, we can select 8. If we want the 7th torch on, we can select 7, and that also works. Next we're building our keypad. We'll start with a 3x4 input that looks like this, and then add levers for now to make it easy on us. We'll add torches on the back of each one except for the zero spot. Then, we'll build an 8 shape that looks like this, giving us areas to break the signals out using these spots. So looking at it now, we have 0, 1 through 3, 4 through 6, and 7 through 9. On the other side that looks like 1, 2, 3, we don't have a 4 so we can set 4 up there, 5 in the middle, set a spot for 6, 7, 8 is going to be up top, and then 9 is here. Then to give our 0 a spot, we can build some blocks down here, and then we're hollowing out a spot underneath like so. It's important to note that the 0 spot will not affect our output here, even though it normally would, because this output is always on, regardless of what we switch this 0 input to. When we switch these to buttons, only one will be pressed at a time, and there won't be any conflicts on this. 
Normally, I'd advise against this sort of routing, but in this case it works, because our bottom wire won't be inverted, but the other ones are. So let's wire this into something that we can work with easily. We'll need the one way over here, the five in the middle, and the nine way off to the right. So let's flip the one bit on. You'll see that's this one, and we can extend it out here to the left. Let's do seven blocks, and then back a few as well. Let's wire and block off where it gets muddy there, and then follow it up just below, bringing it up at the end and blocking it off where it gets muddy with the other wire as well. We'll bring the three over doing the same thing. So now we can go one, two, and three. Now if we go to position four, we'll bring it up and over to avoid messing with that wire. We're going to want it to land right there, so we'll want it to go above like that, with a wire running like this. Plus we can then block it off from the other signals like this. Next is five. It goes right down the middle, so it's pretty easy. Going up and over, blocking off the other signals like that. For six, we'll set that up going on the right side, and we'll want to block it off there and there. Moving on to seven, this one's a little more complicated. We're actually going to move our dust from its original spot, adding blocks there and there, making it so we can have dust coming out this way, and blocking out where it gets muddy with the other wires. We'll want it to land over here, so we can make some steps for the wire and have it go up and over. Let's make sure it reaches all the way to the end, and it does. Eight is in the middle, so it makes this one a bit easier. We can bring eight up like this and place our redstone to wire it all the way to the end. For nine, we'll want to mirror what we did for seven, bringing it over this way and removing the original dust, and then we can just bring it over and down. So now we have nine. Finally, we have to wire zero, which we can just build all the way at the bottom. This one won't be used the same way as our other inputs. Since zero doesn't encode a value, we just need to know when it happens. Now that they're all set and working, let's replace our levers with buttons, being careful to not destroy the blocks, since that will also break the redstone torch behind it. Next, all we have to do is fill this in a little bit to cover our work, and then we get to decorate the keypad. In the next episode, we'll be modifying this a bit further so we can input numbers into our adder and convert a decibel number into binary. See you then. Wild Engineering improved the delay by upgrading his binary adder, built a 4-bit binary decoder in order to give us a wider range of numbers to work with, and built a fully functioning keypad. This machine is almost ready to go, but how do all these pieces fit together? Find out next time on IGN's Greatest Minds.